the Mahakjin sorcerers are the mad tyrants of the, I mean, kings of the galaxy. And as king, you play with a loaded set of rules, and that makes these guys very powerful. All factions in this game has got their own specialty when it comes to game mechanics. Some has easier access to trade goods, some can research technology more easily, and some got stronger units. Mahak's specialty is command tokens, and command tokens equals actions, and we need those to move our ships around the game board. One of the hardest things to handle in this game is the limited movement of our fleets. So imagine being able to lift that token again from an activated system so you can move a fleet once more. And that is exactly what the Mahakt Gene Sorcerers can do. But first, let's have a look at our starting units and then what we should have obtained after the first game round. We have two units with capacity, our carrier and our dreadnought. These ships and our three infantry will secure us up to three planets from the get-go. And then we have one cruiser and two fighters. So our starting units are not bad, but they're not great either. But with these units, we can make an interesting play in round one. We just need to have two conditions fulfilled, and then we can actually gain control of Megatol Rex, and we can secure our first victory point. And I will, of course, show you in one of the first round demonstrations how we can do exactly this. But before we look into the first round demonstration, I think we should have a quick look at some of Mahak's faction abilities so we know which ones we can use right from the start. I have set up a table here so that I can demonstrate each of Mahak's three faction abilities and their agent. The first one is called Edict. When you win a combat, place one command token from your opponent's reinforcements in your fleet pool if it does not already contain one of that player's tokens. Other player's tokens in your fleet pool increase your fleet limit, but cannot be redistributed. So let's say that we attack the purple player here in this system with our cruiser and a dreadnought, and hopefully we win very soon, and then we can take one of his command tokens and place it in our fleet pool. And in this way we can maintain a decent fleet pool size, so we can redistribute our tokens during the game, and place more of our own tokens in the tactical and the strategy pools. And having extra command tokens in our tactical pool will be relevant in the mid to the late game, because when we unlock our commander, we can start doing some really interesting moves, and I will come back to him a little later in the video. But having our opponent's command tokens in our fleet pool is also related to our second faction ability called Imperia. And it says, while another player's command token is in your fleet pool, you can use the ability of that player's commander if it is unlocked. And this can of course be helpful, but it also gives us more details to keep track of. Remember that Mahakt was king, but not just a king, but a tyrant one. And that reminds me of Ares II from Game of Thrones. He was also known as the Mad King. And kings of this caliber doesn't make or even need alliances. So as part of setup, we put back our alliance promissory note into the box, and we cannot accept alliance notes from the other players. But don't worry, we will handle this galaxy far better than Ares handled Westeros. And finally, we have the agent. It says, when you would spend a command token during the secondary ability of a strategic action, you may exhaust this card to remove one of the active player's command tokens from the board and use it instead. So with our agent, we can do the secondary of up to three strategy cards in the first round if we want to but our agent can also be very valuable for some other player, especially in the first round. So if they can pay us some trade goods or maybe even their trade agreement, then we can play our agent on them whenever they play their construction card. And now the Imperium can hear Mahakt if they want to remove a certain command token from the game board. And in this example, they could remove this one. And now they can move their carrier again in this turn and gain control of another planet. I will come back to our commander, hero and mix right after we have taken a look at how the first round can go with the trade strategy card. With a little bit of luck, we can gain control of Megatol Rex in the very first round and score our first victory point. There are a few prerequisites that needs to be in place, but it's not entirely unlikely that we can pull this off. First of all, we need to have a red TechScape planet adjacent to our home system. Then we need five trade goods, and the trade strategy card can help with three of those, and three commodities. 
And then if we have some industrial planets adjacent to our home system, then we can hopefully convert some of our commodities into trade goods when we explore them. Or we can of course try and make a deal with another player and trade some of our commodities for trade goods. And then thirdly, some other player must pick the technology card and not play that until we have at least four trade goods available. All right, let's have a look at how the first round can go with the trade strategy card. And the ultimate goal for this demonstration is to gain control of Megatol Rex in round one. So let's see how we do that. But first of all, we need to play the trade card so that we get the three commodities and three trade goods, but especially the commodities before we explore these industrial planets. So let's do that as our first action. And then when it gets to be the Imperium player, they might fly out here and explore those planets. And when it gets to be the Titans, they can fly out here and gain control of Simlaw. And now when it gets to be us, we can activate here on Aang and fly out there with our Dreadnought and one infantry. And let's explore the planet. That's not the right deck. Here we go. Functioning base. You may gain one commodity or you may spend one trade good or one commodity to draw one action card. And since we have an extra commodity that we don't need, then we can safely spend that and gain one action card. And at the end of our turn, we exhaust Biostems, so we can unexhaust Aang, and we can do that because of the red tech skip it has. And if you want to learn more about the Biostems technology, you can watch a video up in the corner. Then the other players take their turn, so now it gets to be us again. So let's activate out here on Bakal, and we will fly out there only with our carrier, one infantry and two fighters, because we will need this infantry a little later. And let's explore Bakal, see what we get. Abandoned warehouses, you may gain two commodities or you may convert up to two of your commodities to trade goods. And that's perfect for us because we have two commodities and now we can actually use them. And now it gets to be the Empyrean and they decide to play the Warfare card. And we can only look with Envy because we also want to produce units, but we cannot spare any resources in this round. So we have to pass on that. And after everybody has produced, it gets to be the Titans and they play the technology card. And we really want to do the secondary of that. So we flip our agent and then we can spend his token instead of one of our own. So we save one token there, which is nice. Then we need to pay four resources for the technology. So we pay with four trade goods. And we will exhaust Ang here because it has a red tech skip on it. And that means that we can now research the cruiser too. So now all of a sudden our cruiser here got movement 3 and capacity 1. So when it gets to be our turn, we can now activate out here on Megatol Rex. Fly out there with our cruiser and one infantry. And before we can gain control of a planet, we need to spend 6 influence. So we pay 5 of them with our home system and one trade good. And now Megatol Rex is ours. And so is our first victory point. So with the trade strategy card, we can get a pretty good start, not just if we want to rush Megatol Rex, but also in general. Those extra trade goods can help us finance a few ships and some infantry. And then we can spend the five influence on our home system, plus one trade good or one extra influence on buying two command tokens whenever leadership is played. Taking Megatol Rex in the first game round, can make us vulnerable, so we shouldn't expect to keep it for long. But that's okay, because we got the point that we wanted, and we only lose two units if somebody else takes it back. Now let's have a look at our commander and hero. But before we can use our commander, we need to unlock him or her. And we do that by having command tokens from two other different players in our fleet supply. And then we can start doing some really interesting moves. Because what our commander basically allows us to do is to place a command token from our tactical pool in one of the systems that we have activated earlier in the game round and then remove both of them. So in short, we can spend a command token to remove a command token from the game board. And that means that we can unlock fleets that we have already moved once during this game round. And that basically means that we can move the fleet again and again and again for whatever objective we try to score. We just need to have sufficient command tokens in our tactical pool to do this, of course. But having the ability to keep moving the same fleet again and again in the same game round is extremely helpful, especially in the late game where some of the two victory point public objectives are out, which can be very difficult to score. So I will say that this commander is one of the best ones in the game, if not the best one. 
having the flexibility to move the same fleet or fleets multiple times during the same game round makes it so much easier to score some of the public objectives, especially those about controlling planets or having units in certain parts of the galaxy. And if we can do this after the other players have passed, then it just makes it even easier. The hero is called Benediction, it's an action. It says, move all units in the space area of any system to an adjacent system that contains a different player's ships. Space combat is resolved in that system. Neither player can retreat or resolve abilities that would move their ships, then purge this card. Our hero can be played as a very powerful defensive action. So let's say that there are two other players who approach our home system in an attempt to take it away from us. But if they get adjacent to each other, we can play our hero and then force these two players to fight each other instead. And whatever ships remain here should be a lot easier for us to handle. Another interesting example could be that we want to take control of Megator Rex here, but the Imperium got a large fleet there. So we use our hero to move that fleet out of the system and into the adjacent system where the Titans are, and then they can destroy each other's units and we can take Megator Rex afterwards and hopefully gain it after winning the ground combat. We just need to be aware that the Imperium fleet here is not locked down when we play the hero and neither is the Titans since they didn't activate this system earlier in this game round. So the winner of this epic space combat can actually activate Megator Rex and move back in and try to take it away from us. And now it's time for another first round demonstration and this time it's with the leadership strategy card. So let's have a look at how the first round can go with the leadership strategy card. As our first action, we can fly out here to Aang with our Dreadnought and one infantry. And let's explore it. And we get a green relic fragment. And then we can use Biostems to ready that planet because it has a techscape on it. Then as our second action, we can fly out here to Bacal and Alio Prima with our carrier, two infantry and two fighters. And let's explore Bacal first. Oh, we got another fragment. And let's have a look at Alio Prima. You may place one infantry from your reinforcements on this planet. And now we don't have much else to do, so we might as well play the leadership strategy card to gain those three command tokens. One, two, three. If we had a trade good or one influence more we could spend, then using that and the five influence on our home system could be very tempting to buy an additional two command tokens when we play this card. But instead, I would opt in on the secondary of warfare and use these three plus two resources to build more units in our home system. And I believe this is the right thing to do because having those extra two command tokens in round one won't do much for us. So I think we are better off with some extra units built on the secondary of warfare or alternatively activating our home system ourselves and then use the five resources there. So with the leadership strategy card, we have gained control of three planets and two systems. And we have either built more units in our home system, or if we found a trade good, we have researched one technology, and we have started piling up on those precious command tokens. And now, let's have a look at our mix and our flagship. The mech is called Starlancer. It says, after a player whose command token is in your fleet pool activates the system, you may spend their token from your fleet pool to end their turn. They gain that token. So our mechs are extremely effective at defending systems. So let's say that the Imperium player here wants to move in and try to take our home system away from us. But since we have one of his tokens in his fleet supply, we can simply give him that token back and then immediately end his turn. So now he either needs to be able to play the warfare card or have an action card to be able to lift this token from our home system. If you're playing against an inexperienced Mahak player, you now know that it is nearly impossible to take his home system away from him. So if you want to stop Mahak from winning the game, you better make sure to do it before taking his home system will be necessary. Now let's have a look at our flagship. It says, during combat against an opponent whose command token is not in your fleet pool, apply plus one to the results of this unit's combat rolls. And as we can see, it rolls two dice and hits on a five, got movement of one and capacity of three. And in this example here, we have the Titans token here in our fleet pool. So if he decides to attack us, then we can use our mech as we just saw to help end his turn immediately. But we don't have the Imperium players token in our fleet pool. So in case he decides to move in, then our flagship will roll two dice and hit on a three. And then hopefully we can win this combat. Next up is a demonstration of how the first round can go with the politics strategy card. 
And after that, we will have a look at the awesome technology that Mahak brought to research. And I will go for this tragic card in case we sit far away from the speaker. And in this example here, we have the speaker on our left hand side. And that means that without the politics card, we get to pick strategy card as the last one in the next round. And then it makes it harder for us to get the card that we actually need. And that would probably be the trade strategy card. So we get more trade goods or more resources to build more units or research technology. Or it could be the leadership card, both so we gain the three command tokens, but also have the opportunity to buy more. But with this card, we also get to draw two action cards and we get to look at the top two agendas in the agenda deck. So similar to the previous first round demonstration, we will have gained control of three planets and two systems, and we will have produced some units in our home system. But this time we gain the speaker token so that we get to pick strategy card as the first one in round two, which can be very powerful. But now let's have a look at our faction technologies and what shenanigans we can do with these. Our first take is called Genetic Recombination. It says, you may exhaust this card before a player casts votes. That player must cast at least one vote for an outcome of your choice, or remove one token from their fleet pool and return it to their reinforcements. With this technology, we can distort another player to vote for an outcome of an agenda that we want. And this can put him in a difficult situation, because if he doesn't, then he will lose a token from his fleet supply. So now he has to choose between an outcome of an agenda that he doesn't really want or possibly lose one or more ships if he has fleets just as big as his fleet supply allows him to have. But instead of just playing this, then we might as well try to make a deal that is in our favor. Because if we really don't care about the outcome of a given agenda, we might as well try to get a few trade goods or maybe a promissory note from a player who will be strongly affected by this agenda. But all in all, I think this technology is very situational. Under the right circumstances, it can be very powerful, but I don't think it is a must have. But it fits perfectly with the faction law. Our other faction take is an upgrade of our infantry, but our starting infantry is already unique to this faction. It says, after this unit is destroyed, gain one commodity or convert one of your commodities to a trade good. If we upgrade it to the Crimson Legionnaire 2, then it rolls better and now hit on a 7 instead of 8. And they also become immortal, as we get to place the destroyed legionaries in our home system when it gets to be our turn again. Most other factions have to make a roll to see if the infantry gets back. So we can actually make money on losing infantry, and we actually don't even lose them. But before researching this technology, I would strongly consider how much ground combat I expect in this game. Because in my experience, ground combat doesn't happen that often, making this technology less useful. But of course, if Arborek or Federation of Sol is present in the game, then I might consider getting it. And now let's have a look at the non-faction specific technologies. Our starting technologies are predictive intelligence and biostems. And with predictive intelligence, we can redistribute our command tokens on our command sheet here but we can also cast three additional votes during the agenda phase if we wish to. And if you want to learn more about this technology, you can watch this video up here in the corner. And then we have Biostems. We have already used it in one of the first round demonstrations, but with this card, we can either unexhaust a planet that got a tech skip on it, or if we want to use predictive intelligence, then we can exhaust Biostems to unexhaust predictive intelligence. Neither of these technologies are my favorites to research by myself, but when I start with them, I actually enjoy having them. Our commander gives us flexibility when it comes to command tokens and therefore also our fleets. So when it comes to researching technology, I would primarily go for unit upgrades. And that would be the Cruiser 2, our Crimson Legionnaire 2, but also Dreadnought 2, Carrier 2 and Fighter 2, depending on what the needs are out on the game board. The Cruiser 2 unit upgrade is a good one to start with. It's powerful and easy for us to get. The extra movement and capacity can help us score many different public objectives. No matter whether we have a red tech skip planet in our slice or not, then I would go for the AI development algorithm early in the game because it counts as a universal prerequisite for any unit upgrade that we want to research. And then we can much easier get the units that we actually need. And we will also get a production discount based on the number of unit upgrades that we have. So this technology is a win-win for us. If we expect some ground combat to happen, we can go for the Crimson Legionnaire 2. 
It requires two green technologies, and we start with biostems, so AI development algorithm can count as the second one. Now our infantry will both be stronger, they will be immortal, and we can either make some commodities or trade goods whenever they are destroyed. Then we could go for the Dreadnought 2 if we have plenty of resources and we need the firepower of this strong unit. Or we could go for Carrier 2. It has movement of 2 and an increased capacity if we need to bring our Crimson Legionnaires around the game board. So which unit upgrades we should go for depends very much on what other factions are in the game. And we should of course go for the unit upgrades that helps us the most. Some of the unit upgrades require blue technology to get. So I would either go for Anti-Mars Deflectors or Dark Energy Tap, depending on how the map is built. And then I would go for Sling Relay, because with this technology we get to produce one ship at one of our space docks without locking it down. And we also got Biostems, so we can unexhaust Sling Relay, so we can do it twice in the same game round. And that means that we can postpone some of our important, powerful moves until later in the game round, where some of the other players have hopefully passed. And if it is a technology-heavy game, we could ultimately go for fleet logistics and lightweight deflectors to make us completely unstoppable. Mahakt also has a unique promissory note. It's called Scepter of Dominion. At the start of the strategy phase, choose one non-home system that contains your units. Each other player who has a token on the Mahak player's command sheet places a token from the reinforcements in that system. Then return this card to the Mahak player. So this promissory note is very similar to the diplomacy card. The difference is that this one cannot be used in our home system for the holder of this card, whereas the diplomacy card cannot be used on Megatol Rex, but it can be used on the other player's home system. So let's say that the Imperium player got this card and they control Megatol Rex, but they don't have a lot of units in there, so there's a big risk of other players taking it away from them. So we are now at the start of the strategy phase, and if we take a look at Mahak's fleet supply here, we can see that it contains tokens from Titans, Nomad, and of course Mahak themselves. So when the Nomad player plays this card, then he hands it back to the Mahak player and places those three tokens in here. And now these three players cannot activate Megator Rex unless they can remove their token in some other way. So this promissory note is fairly powerful and definitely worth trying to sell. Please consider subscribing to my channel Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.